Joe Biden went down to Florida to uh, see the damage, uh, show his support, as well as speak next to uh, Ron DeSantis. And it was an interesting dynamic playing out because both of them got up to talk and kind of complimented one another. But then Joe Biden dropped a little bit of a bomb. Okay, later he drops an actual F-bomb, but in this case, he drops a bomb by going, I'm so happy that Ron DeSantis has recognized, and we're seeing people finally recognize, global warming and the role in which that plays in all of this, in these extreme weather events and all those things. And he says that right as DeSantis is behind him. And DeSantis has to just sit there and be like, oh gosh, because most Republicans still probably don't like that being brought up within this conversation. Uh, but first, this press conference that was done, uh, take a look here at DeSantis being complimentary towards Biden, someone who typically they have quite the feud going on. DeSantis throwing a lot of uh, insults, usually criticisms by uh, Biden's way. Now, a little softer because I think he does see a situation where I got to be supportive of the guy who is able to give the proper amount of support to my state during this crisis. Take a look. We've worked as well across state, local and federal of any disaster that I've seen. And so I want to thank uh, Administrator Criswell from FEMA for being uh, on the ground, uh, being supportive and being very responsive. I think one of the things that you're seeing in this response, we are cutting through the bureaucracy. We are cutting through the red tape. Uh, and that's from local government, state government, all the way up uh, to the president. So we appreciate uh, the, the team effort. This is something that is, um, you know, these storms come, they're on the horizon. You kind of project, hey, it could be really bad. Oftentimes it doesn't necessarily get to that level. Well, this was, this was the full Monty. I mean, the storm surge that you saw through here uh, met the expectations, the highest expectations. And you've seen what significant damage that can do. Uh, so I'm just thankful that everyone's banded together. We've got a lot of work to do here. But I'll tell you, the spirit of the people of this state and Southwest. And then continues on to talk about them, which is absolutely true. Um, and it has been good to see a kind of smooth, coordinated effort by the government individuals involved in all this uh, go pretty well. And this is a situation where, okay, we have all these political divisions but I guess it takes a hurricane for uh, DeSantis to worry less about his chances attacking Biden, his ability to do so, and more about what would absolutely, uh, actually help the members of his state and the people of his state by not doing all the political stunts, not just attacking one another and instead coming together for a moment, for a moment. And then here's that moment that I spoke about where Joe Biden just beautifully drops uh, uh, statement that you know Ron DeSantis, who's standing behind him, does not like. Somewhere else, remember, this is the United States of America. We're all in this together. Thank you. Mr. President, what do state and local and federal officials need to do differently to prevent future loss of life? What the governor's done is pretty remarkable. So, far. so for our podcast listeners, he finished his speech, reporter asked him a question, and now he's standing away from the microphone, just speaking out to the crowd. I think you'll be able to hear it still. He's speaking pretty loudly, uh, but this is where the important part is. This is what, what, he's, what he's done. In terms of, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, first of all, the biggest thing the governor's done and some of the others have done, they've recognized this thing called global warming. The world is changing. It's changing. And we have to change the way with the zoning codes. For example, somewhere else, remember. Okay, then he gets into the specifics. Um, but it is true. Global warming is going to cause a situation where we have to adapt in new ways. And, um, or I guess adapt, yeah, is always going to be a new way. Um, but we do have to figure out ways to adapt properly to the changing environment in which we're going to live. And uh, denying the very fact that it's happening is going to severely prevent people's ability to do that, um, to adapt, to set up those correct processes um, to help us, uh, you know, live through this as easily as possible. Now, of course, number one priority, we need to do what we can to try to stop the severe 
climate change, right? We need to stop doing all the things that we do as humans that contribute to it, um, as well as take steps to uh, prevent horrible uh, effects based on what we haven't stopped that is happening. Um, but too many people still won't even recognize the real fact that climate change is happening and that it plays a role in severe weather events and all these things. And that's just going to hurt the people in which they represent. It's going to hurt uh, people themselves who are denying these things. And that's, that's a huge bummer. So I love how Biden, instead of saying, I want everyone to believe in this, he says, I love that the governor recognizes that global warming is happening. And just to quickly say, specifically about the storm, like I talked about when we covered it earlier, you can't say that global warming has caused one particular storm. That's not scientifically correct. But you can say that the uh, magnitude of severe weather events is increasing, is uh, contributed to by climate change, by global warming. That can be said, and that needs to be recognized for sure. And then something that's got a lot of news from this uh, kind of event and then Biden afterwards walking up to the mayor of, I think, Fort Myers, Florida, and they're having a little talk. And uh, he says something to the effect of your family, I'm sure, is a lot like mine and uh, you can't F with a Biden. So it's kind of just a fun little moment between him and this mayor. And it's gotten a lot of attention. Some people are mad, specifically on the right. I don't know why. No one cares. Yes, of course, People drop F-bombs <laughs> in private, even the president. Why is that a big deal? Who knows? Take a look. He was in Florida touring the damage caused by Hurricane Ian. He met with Governor Ron DeSantis, of course. There was a moment between President Biden and the mayor of Fort Myers Beach that was caught on a hot mic. I just want to play it for you. Listen in. Yeah, goddamn right. <laughs> and, and I can't argue with your brothers outside the house. That's exactly right. right. That's exactly right. All right, good to see you. So just a fun little moment between him and that other individual, um, but it has gotten a lot of attention. And to me, that's just kind of fun and. Uh, I don't want to use the word adorable with the president, but kind of just, it's likable. You know what I mean? It's, oh, cool. Uh, it kind of makes them a little bit more humanized and all that type of stuff, which I think is a good thing. Now, it's a different situation whenever you're choosing to use that type of language in a speech because it's a choice and you're um, maybe trying to convey a particular point or particular energy with that language. But when you're having a private conversation that gets picked up on a hot, hot mic, whatever. You do you. Um, and I thought that was actually kind of likable of Biden there.